Hello everyone, we're getting ready to look up today with a brand new Uplook video, tackling one of our top 10 lists. You can like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Today, we will focus on 10 forgotten ministries. In the last chapter of Hebrews, several times the author warns the first century believers, don't forget and remember. Don't forget those who are easily overlooked. Strangers because they aren't of us. Prisoners because they're not with us. And so on. So let's examine some ministries that are easy to forget because every ministry is needed. Our first forgotten ministry is visiting widows in need. We read about that in James chapter 1 and verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. God has laid claim to this. He says he'll be a father to the fatherless and a husband to the widows. So he takes this very personally. And when we're involved in this ministry, we're doing the work of God himself. And it's a needed ministry. Widows, this is a new chapter in their life. Things that they used to depend on their husbands to do. Now all of a sudden they're left with these things. And sometimes to have people come alongside is hugely helpful. I've noticed sometimes that there'll be several couples that do a lot of things together and then one of the partners dies and all of a sudden people feel awkward. Maybe this widow should not be coming along with these other couples, but I think that's ridiculous. I think uh, they've been lifelong friends. They should keep it up. So let's remember the widows because it's an easy thing to do to let them slip by because sometimes they end up being a little out of the focus of the activities of the church and let's not forget them. And number two, do not forget to entertain strangers. Yes, this is one of the verses in Hebrews 13, verse two, and it says that uh, it's possible that we might entertain angels unawares. And of course, this is referring to the story of Abraham when he showed hospitality to the three strangers who came, one was the Lord and two were angels. And it's important for us not to overlook strangers. God said to Israel, you remember that you were strangers down in Egypt and you know what it was like. And so don't you forget the strangers. And anyone who's done some traveling knows what it is to be a stranger and coming in and for people to show hospitality to them is a very wonderful thing. Hebrews 13.3 also says, remember the prisoners as if chained with them for our third forgotten ministry. And this is, of course, is referring to the suffering church. The statistics tell us now that on average, every day, 11 Christians are being executed for their faith around the world. One in nine Christians in the world are living in a high-level persecution area. And it's actually growing, this, this problem. And the two most populous countries in the world, India and China, are now on the top 50 list for persecution. So we need to remember these people, we need to pray for them. There are many ministries that make information available to us. A little search online will find out good resources that help us remember the suffering church around the world. Number four is for mature Christians to be training younger Christians. Right, so we read, for example, in Titus 2, verses 3 to 5, that older women should be working with younger women, and then a little later on that the older men should be working with the younger men. With older women, of course, it says that they should be teaching the younger women how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to be homemakers, how to make the house a home. All of these are important things and not always remembered. This is a ministry that somehow has been lost in the shuffle, and we need to take this into consideration. I had a young man come to me and say he would love to be discipled by me when I was traveling extensively in those days. And I said, look around, look at some of these other men here. They need it as much as you do. 
And he went to one of these older men and said, would you meet with me every week? Just read the scriptures, pray together. And that older man really came to life as a result. It's not a one-way street. Uh, as older people minister to younger people, the younger people get their light, but the older people catch some of the heat. And uh, when you put the heat and light together, you can have a fire. Number five, knowing, supporting, and encouraging elders. Wow, this is certainly true. And again, we go back to our Hebrews chapter 13 passage, and we see here that twice he talks about those who lead us, those who guide us, and how important it is for us to know them and to obey them, to submit to them, so that they can be happy when they give an account for our souls. And this is always forgotten, not because they're never among us like the prisoner or because they're not one of us like the stranger, but because they're always there. They're like the furniture. Whenever you open the doors, the elders are there, and we sometimes take them for granted. Sometimes people will say, why don't the elders do something? Well, they probably are, but they're not telling you. Just like if you had a problem, they'd want to be discreet about what they're doing. They may very well be doing something that you don't know about. So let's be there for our elders. We're not even to listen to a charge against an elder without witnesses, because the elders need to be given some leeway. They're dealing with issues, and so we need to trust them. We need to pray for them. We need to encourage them. Have you hugged your elder lately? Have you, have you told your elder, I appreciate what you're doing? I was in a home where the elder brought out a homemade card that four couples had made thanking him for his ministry as an elder. And he, with tears in his eyes, said, do you think I'm the only elder that's ever received a letter like this? Well, you can be sure Hallmark doesn't make cards like that. You'll have to home make them. But the fact is that these are desperately needed in this day when it's a difficult thing to be an elder, but it's a great opportunity to encourage them. Our next forgotten ministry is widows who have washed saints' feet should continue to do this. Right, this is kind of an unknown little passage of Scripture, but in 1 Timothy chapter 5, the idea is that if a couple have been serving the Lord through their years, then the husband dies, the woman should not have to go back and eke out a living getting a part-time job at Walmart. She should be able to carry on doing the ministry she's doing. If she's washed the saints' feet, and of course this is referring to uh, refreshingly applying practically some encouragement from the Word of God to the lives of God's people. Visiting young mothers, visiting in the hospital, maybe a women's prison, they're writing to missionaries. There are lots of things that widows can do. Widows should not be looked on as charity cases. They should be looked on as blue chip investment. And sometimes what we need to do is give them a gas card or buy them postage to send letters to missionaries or give them a little money to set aside so that when they visit the poor, they can help them with their groceries. So widows should be looked upon as an asset for the work and not as someone who's on the shelf because their husband has died. And our next one is good works among believers and in the community. Now, this is a surprising one as a forgotten ministry. Why does it make the list? I think what's happened is that we've been so concerned that people think that you can work your way to heaven that we've made good works a bad thing. The good works are filthy rags, stay away from that. And don't realize that while you can't work your way to heaven, you should work on your way to heaven. And good work should be a demonstration of our gratitude to the Lord. The New Testament is chock full of verses about doing good works, that those who are rich in this world's goods should also be rich in good works that we should maintain a pattern of good works. There are lots of verses that tell us this. The Lord died to redeem a people zealous of good works, and men should see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. But for whatever reason, people have felt, well, no, we, we don't want to get involved in good works. That'll muddy up our gospel work. 
let's just stick to the gospel. But Paul says, this may be one of the reasons that you're unfruitful in your gospel work because you're not doing good works in the community. Good works and good news are a great team. People don't always appreciate my good news, but they appreciate my good works. And my good works will give entree, will give the opportunity for us to get a word in the gospel. If people know we care about them, then they'll listen to us much more readily. And that moves perfectly into our next one, which is evangelism. Yeah, it's strange that this would be a forgotten ministry, but neither pastoral care nor evangelism are one-man ministries. Sometimes people feel like, well, he's the evangelist in our local church, and we'll leave that with him. An evangelist, technically, according to Ephesians 4, is somebody who equips all the saints so they can do the work. And so an evangelist should be someone who's saying, here's an area where I think you'd be really good at. Have you ever considered telling your neighbors, I pray for my neighbors every day, I'd like to know what I can pray for, and find out that they're eager to tell you about their burdens because they know you're willing to pray. There are lots of opportunities like this. When we open ourselves up to sharing the gospel, we discover that there's room for everybody on the team. There are all different ways to do gospel work. And we see this in the book of Acts. So let's be wide open to the idea. Not everybody may be an evangelist, but everybody should be a witness. And our next one is sharing the word with one another privately. I don't know why this is, but sometimes we'll get together in our holy clubs on Sunday, and we're quite free to talk about the Bible and spiritual things. But when we walk out the door, that may be the last time we talk with another Christian about spiritual things. You see in the book of Malachi in dark days that when the people got together, they thought upon his name. They talked about the Lord. And the Lord, it says he pricked up his ears like, whoa, there's something worth paying attention to. He said, let's write a book about this. Let's memorialize this. And so the Lord rejoices when he sees his people. And they meet on the street or meet for breakfast or make a phone call at a coffee break, say, I was just thinking about you. I was reading this verse. It was such an encouragement to me. I thought you'd be encouraged. I just have two minutes, but I wanted to share this with you. Or to call up a shut-in. Here's a little pillow to lay your head on today. I just read this this morning, and I thought of you. What an encouragement. What an inspiration that is. We need each other. It's a tough world out there, and we need one another to interact in spiritual and rich ways, sharing what we're learning in the Word and encouraging one another. It's a very needed ministry. Like Priscilla and Aquila, they didn't just stick with the preaching at the building. When they got home, they brought Apollos home and they showed him the way more perfectly. They helped him, as the scripture says, we're fellow helpers to the truth. And we need to be doing this more. And then leads right into our number 10, encouragement. The great thing about encouragement is you don't need a special gift for it. You don't need a lot of money for it. You can give away words of encouragement. You can send a note. You can get in touch with people and do it now. You know, the saying is you can never do a good thing too soon because you never know how soon it'll be too late. If God brings someone to your mind, this is not your brain misfiring. This is God speaking clearly, and we need to respond to it. And if we do start to respond to it, he'll do it more often. Instead of just having this idea like some point or other, I'll get around to it. You need to do it when the Spirit of God prompts you because you may not have an opportunity. So may God help us as we think about this wonderful opportunity to to open our eyes again to some of the forgotten ministries to say, Lord, there's something I can be doing. And I want your spirit to lead me and to encourage me and help me in this because I don't want this to be a forgotten ministry. This may be the ministry that you have called me to do. May the Lord encourage us all to pull together as a team and make sure that none of these are forgotten ministries.